What's up YouTube, my name's Sam Dahl and welcome to the channel. Today I'm going through a step-by-step -step guide for building your first gaming or video editing PC. This should be a concise video with tips and tricks for beginners. For components I use in this build, please see the affiliate marketing links below. And without further ado, let's get started. First of all, I recommend part PC Part Picker. This is great for comparing your components and checking their compatibility. So this is the first place you want to head to whenever you want to build a PC. All right, we're going to go through some of the components now. So this is your power supply, motherboard, RAM, CPU cooler, the CPU of course, SSD, this is one terabyte and good value for money, and your graphics card, which is pretty hard to come by at the moment. So once you've got all these, let's jump into putting it together. First of all, we want to be putting our CPU inside our motherboard. So you're going to be careful when taking this out. Make sure you um, wear an ESD strap ideally, just to prevent damaging the components. And the most important thing you're going to need is this guide, your motherboard user manual. If you're stuck at all during the build, refer back to this and this has all the detailed instructions you need for building your PC. Right, once we get it out, we're going to build our PC outside the case initially so it's easier. Then we're going to put it inside the case later on. So you want to take the CPU out of its case and you've got to be really careful when lining this up to make sure your triangles line up on the board and the CPU. Take your time doing this. Don't rush it. Once you're happy it's in place, lower the lever to secure it in place. We now want to mount the CPU cooler. So you're going to have to take off the stock mounting method and put on the brackets that came with your CPU cooler. Refer to the CPU cooler manual for this section. Then we're going to put our uh, SSD in place. Kind of put it at an angle and then you push it down and, and screw the back on. Make sure you install your standoff initially. This motherboard comes with uh, two SSD slots. Uh, I'm using the one on the left here uh, because it came with a heatsink as standard. So once you remove the sticky back, uh, of the heatsink, screw that in place and we're ready to install the next part. Alright, we're now going to install the RAM, so make sure you refer to your user manual of your motherboard again to see which RAM slots you want to use. So as I'm only installing two RAM sticks, um, I'm using the top one and the, the second one down, so that will make like a satisfying click when you install it. Right, for installing the rest of the CPU fan, we wanted to do this after the RAM was installed because you can't access your RAM sticks with the CPU cooler because it's so big. Um, so follow your CPU cooler instructions depending on which one you go for. This one's quite big so we have to actually remove the, the fan initially to be able to access the screw ports. Um, then put about one one blob in the center of your CPU of your thermal paste around four to five millimeters in diameter There's also videos online about different patterns to try but the recommended is just one dot in the middle right, This is actually quite hard to line up so um, just kind of do it by eye so the screws line up and then just gently screw it down. There is a recommended torque for this but unless you haven't got a torque wrench um, just kind of do it close. Don't over tighten basically if you don't want to damage anything. Reinstall your fans, they just clip on. The other fan didn't have the clips installed so you just kind of line them up here like so and then clip them onto the heat sinks. Make sure the airflow is consistent and you look at the arrows in the fan to make sure it's going in the right direction. We're now going to unpack this beast of uh, GPU. Uh, this is the best one I could get at the time. So it's a uh, 3060 Ti. 
All right, once you've unpacked it and removed it from the ESD bag, remember to remove the cover that's covering up the pins and line it up with the slot. Sorry, my head's in the way here. Then click it into place. I was surprised by how wobbly it is at this at this stage, but um, once it goes in the case, you can put the supporting arm on. All right, power supply. Make sure you spec this to at least be double what your components actually need, uh, and you and you get a decent one because if this goes wrong, you can ruin your entire PC. Uh, and don't worry about all the cables; we only need a few of them for this build. So you need the CPU cable, the graphics card cable and the motherboard cable. So just plug these into the corresponding slots into the power supply. These are actually surprisingly hard to push in and out so don't be afraid to give it a bit of force. Be more careful when you're pulling out again later as not to damage it, especially when plugging into the motherboard. So we're going to put the motherboard cable in here. Again, refer to your user manual to find out which where these slots and ports are and make it easier to find on the board. Alright. Plug your power supply on and then we're ready for the first boot. So you want to refer to your user manual again to see which two pins you need to short to pretend to be the power switch. Obviously you don't have the power switch plugged in yet because this is in the case. Um, so just use something metallic to short across those pins. Now we're in the BIOS, we want to set up our RAM ready for use. So go to AI Tweaker and change this setting down here to DOCP, which stands for Direct Overclock Profile. This will load a preset overclock file for your DRM uh, so that your hardware will be fully optimized. While we're in the BIOS, we're going to update our fan settings. Depending on how what you're going to be doing, you can either have it set to silent, turbo, or full speed. I normally have mine set to kind of silent or standard. But yeah, it's up to you. So go in and change all your individual fan settings to meet yours. And if you've got a liquid cooled, you can change your pump profile settings there as well. Right, make sure you save and exit uh, and we're now ready to put the build inside the case. So unpack your case obviously. Be careful if you have got glass panels like this one not to break them. Lay it flat and take off the access panel. Moving the cables out of the way so that when we put the PC down um, we go in smoothly. We're now going to install the IO shield and the back of the chassis, make sure you get the correct orientation and just firmly push it till it clicks in place. Remove the unneeded expansion slot covers so that your GPU can be inserted. And then you just drop your build in so that it lines up with the screws and slots. There's a, there was a pin in the middle to locate it and then go around and fix all the screws in place. This can be quite fiddly and take, take some time. Just be careful. All right, we're now gonna install the GPU support arm. And then route the power supply cables on the back. So as you can see, I've slided in the power supply there and we're just gonna do up the thumb screws to hold it in place. And then you want to route your cables to the closest hole in your case to where the port is used. So when we look around the front, I'll show you. So for the CPU cable, there's a slot at the very top. So you can fold that through and then plug it in place. 
and then you want to use the side the side holes for the motherboard cable yeah so make sure your uh, GPU power supply cables are securely in all right now plug in your system panel connections again refer to your user manual for where your power supply reset switch and LEDs get plugged in there uh, and install your fan cables as well. These are dotted around the motherboard, so again, refer to the manual. Plug in your USB connector as well, and put the back panel back on. And your front panel. All right, so now to install Windows, simply go to uh, Windows downloads and we want to create a system image so download this first this obviously has to be done on a second PC obviously I've sped most of this up um, depending on how quick your internet this can take up to probably a couple of hours so click this option here click next Select which version you want and language. And then you want to select USB flash drive. So make sure you have a, a freshly formatted USB stick for this. All right, once you've completed going through these these setups for the USB drive and your USB is ready, follow the install instructions for installing Windows and you're good to go. Thanks for watching. Remember to like, subscribe and follow the affiliate marketing links below if you want to build a similar spec PC.